Welcome to the third episode of What You Talk About, Willits, a monthly series on home recording tips and tricks hosted by noted guitarist and electronic musician Christopher Willits. This episode is brought to you by Scion. For more information, go to scion.com. Since the last episode, got a bunch of different questions. A few of them were centered around MIDI interfaces and chaining gear together and stuff. One of the questions was, what if you don't have uh, an audio interface that doesn't have a, a MIDI input? Well, that's, that's totally fine. You can buy just a separate MIDI interface. And there's, like I have a MIDI sport at home that, that I use on a different computer. If you're using multiple MIDI devices together, like for instance, we have the GR20 here, and then usually I have a, a pocket fader, and then we have uh, the FCB 1010 here. All of these can be daisy chained together and then be plugged into your MIDI interface. When you're doing that though, you wanna make sure that you, you have each one sent to um, a different MIDI channel. So that if you're sending note numbers from different devices, they're not gonna conflict with each other. All right, so this week we're talking about using a MIDI pickup. I want to describe how this is working. This is going into a Roland GR20, and then we're then using Ableton to produce all the sounds from this uh, MIDI input. Let's talk about what MIDI is briefly. MIDI stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. It's been around for years now. Around like 1983, all these corporations came together, uh, largely actually led by Roland, and um, they wanted to create a common language so that all this new electronic gear could communicate to each other. And it's awesome. Um, what people, and it's also not awesome at the same time because there's different limitations to it, but it's more awesome than not awesome because you can have different gear communicate to each other. And there's not really another standard, you know, standardized way of doing that. But what confuses a lot of people um, about MIDI <clears throat> is that MIDI is not audio. Uh, MIDI is just a protocol for communicating between devices. So we're not actually sending an audio signal from the GR20 into the MIDI input here. Okay, that's just some ones and zeros that are being sent, transmitting note information and velocity and the length of the note and all this stuff. So the way that this pickup works is each little section of this pickup is, um, is sensitive to each of the six strings. So a current is then sent to this box over here, the GR20, and then the GR20 is doing um, a voltage to MIDI conversion. So it's converting the vibration of the current into a note number. So once we get the note number uh, from the GR20, we can send it to a keyboard or we can send it to Ableton or anything we want to. In Ableton Live, we're gonna be using two different kind of instruments. We're gonna be using operator and then we're gonna be using uh, drum rack. So operator is a way you can synthesize new sounds and then a drum rack is a way that you can take a sample, slice it up, and then we can map all those different notes, those different slices to different notes on the keyboard <laughs> onto the, uh, the guitar uh, fretboard. So let's set up a new project in Ableton. We have to make sure that our MIDI preferences are set. This will just take a second. So if you do a command comma with a Mac or go to live preferences, we want to click on MIDI and sync, and then we have input and output. Okay, for input, we want to just make sure that all these are turned on. Okay, these are slightly different between track, sync, and remote, but just for simplicity's sake right now, just keep it on. You mainly need this one on. And um, for output, we don't have to worry about it because we're not really outputting anything from here. But what's really cool about this setting is if you had another Ableton setup, you could send sync from this Ableton setup to another one. So if you're jamming with a friend, they could get your pulse and then you guys are gonna be in sync. Uh, I actually did this, did this on my last tour, which worked really well. I had two computers, both running different things, but luckily now I can just have one. Okay, so that's that. You just set up, make sure that it's turned on. And right now the Traveler is my MIDI port, but you guys could have whatever, it doesn't matter. Okay, so then for this one MIDI track, we have to set up some type of instrument that's gonna take this MIDI input and do something with it. Um, 
Right now you can see this meter right here is showing the velocity amount. So in other words, how hard the note is being hit. And we're seeing that right now because on the MIDI input right here, we have all in selected. This input selector is right there. Same thing that we were doing a couple episodes ago when we were setting up our loops. So all ins just means that any MIDI input is coming in, okay? We're not, we're not discriminating against traveler input or some other interface or whatever. All lens is coming in and then also all channels is coming in. All channels is fine right now because this is really the only thing we're gonna be recording. But if we had a keyboard or other devices set up, you'd wanna make sure that you're specific to the channel of that MIDI device. And again, you, you set that on the device itself. You're not saying that in Ableton. You actually have to go into the hardware and say, this is transmitting on channel number two or three or 16 or whatever. That's good to go. So now we have to set up on the MIDI track, we're gonna set up a operator. An operator is the way that it's gonna translate the MIDI note number it's getting from the GR20 to uh, actual audio signal. So here's operator. You know, whatever. This is um, an FM synthesis module, so you can do tons of different stuff with this. And I have a couple different presets here. This is a... Uh, here's another one. This is like super high frequency stuff. The cool thing about this thing, it tracks really well. Like. I remember a long time ago in high school, my friend had one of these and it was, it was just horrible. The way it felt when you're playing, there's like huge latency. And then the sounds, you couldn't adapt the sounds very well. So you're stuck with like playing um, like saxophone sounds on your guitar and stuff, which I don't know, not to diss it, but I'm not really into that. This is a sound that I like to use, um, like different bass sounds but I can get low frequencies that I can't get on just the, the fretboard itself with vibrating strings. And it saves me having to bring um, a bass or, or my baritone with me if I'm wanting to take this guitar with me on the road. <laughs> 